Good morning, Saints. This is Big D Cross. God bless every one of you on the podcast. And, uh, I got some exciting stuff uh, we're going to talk about and maybe really will help you and change the lives of others. Uh, let's open up in prayer. Dear Yeshua, by the binding cords that we stand together in agreement, let your word be conveyed spiritually to all who listen and let them take ownership to this, Father, that everyone that is in that parenthood, Father, will be able to become more and greater by your wisdom and knowledge and glory. We give you praise and thanks. Amen. Amen. Today we're going to talk about parenting what it means and there's a lot to that um i was talking to a man the other day as a testimony i always bring out and i and i told him i said look um way well, well, you got to look at parenting on a uh, physical side or the as processed food versus real food you can sit your children down on real food and you can help them see the light and fill their oil up or you can let the world take ownership to that and of course they're going to learn from tiktok and social media and all that and and i don't know if you've seen lately here these kids are all backwards uh in prison at young young ages it's very very sad how you see things and the way it goes um i i can't even begin to tell you how disappointing it is um but it, this is because of parenting. So let's go into Psalms 1, 1, 6. Blessed uh, is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked or stands in the path of the sinner, but he uh, doesn't sit in the seat of the sculptors or delight in the law. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and on him he'll meditate day and night. And he'll be like that tree planted by the river waters and its fruit will yield in its due season and leaves shall not wither and everything it does will prosper. So we look in that, you know, first thing we want to train that child up is to understand how the world works. And the way it works is don't have any part of it because it is not part of God. And the mockery part of it is fitting into it and concentrating on the law of God, meditating on him at night, is exactly what we need to be doing. Um, I know that a lot of people think that the harsh, harsh or punishment, or I used to take a belt, or I did this, or I'm like, look, the best way you can build a child is to build that child. That's right, build him, not tear him down. And I remember, you know, when I was growing up, I had insecurities from parenting. Um, the men in my life weren't weren't there, and when they were, they used a bully technique to get me to abide or whatever they wanted. It just didn't work, and I wasn't happy, and was the first thing we do, rebel. And we don't want that either, so, you know, when you have that opportunity, and your children are or even grown kids, you know, teenagers, whatever you want to look at, and you're letting them watch these systems, you know, GTA on PlayStation, Grand Theft Auto, or uh, these games, this subliminals into their mind, then they take ownership to it. That's why kids think they can go out with a gun today and it'd be okay. That's why they're making bad choices is because we're subliminaling this through the game systems. And is it your fault? No, you just got them what they wanted and you were trying to be, you know, wonderful. But is it costing you? Yes. Does it cost you when you don't pay attention to your child? Yes. Does it cost you when you yell at that child? Yes. Clearly, the Bible says uh, do not exasperate your child and rebuke them uh, gently. Rebuke comes in a gentle state, not in no butcher state where you think you can just go off on a child. And many people don't get that, and they think they can just do what they want. Ephesians 6, 4 says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. And Proverbs 22, uh, 6 says, If you train that child in the way he shall go, even when he is old, he will not depart from it. And that's the number one thing. What is our future? Our kids. And what's going on right now? They're failing. Not everybody, but a lot of them. 
Is it the parent's fault? Sometimes it's 80%, sometimes it's 60 depends on the individual and their heart. But the key is you got to follow what Yeshua wants and not what we want. The heritage of the Lord is going to be these children. This is going to be our offspring is for that reason. If you read Psalms 127 through 5, it says, Behold, children are the heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb of a reward. Not hurt, pain, or you were somebody you didn't like and broke up, you know. A reward, like arrows in the hand of a warrior, are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. And I, <clears throat> it, it goes back to loving uh, with all your heart. And your heart and my heart, you know, we don't know what love is. Agape is love is gentle, patient, kind, not self-seeking, rude, um, keeps no records of wrong, uh, only hopes and love and delights in those things where it never fails, that that's where we need to be on with the children. That's why Colossians 3.21 says, Fathers, don't provoke your children lest they become discouraged. And that's exactly what happens. A lot of kids are discouraged, insecure. Uh, girls, at the, boys, you name it, they go to Instagram and then, you know, they get this Hollywood stat or they get a fake imagery of life and then they enter into it and then you lose those children and they act like they're into what you're saying and they're totally the opposite of what you're talking about and don't really care i'm going to tell you give you a testimony of my life and rebellion so that you can understand when i was um younger i had an incident where my father was just bullying me you know he's, a, he's bullying he's a and that's the way he knew things so you can't really i couldn't say he was wrong but he was bullying me everything was bullying you know you're you're gonna sling five acres i'm gonna teach you something you're gonna constantly learn something i you know you wet back in the ears and with a vitalis on your hair so you know, you stop thinking about what your hair is and be a little feminine act. You know, that kind of bullying. Well, I could have ended up a terrible person from that. But I realized that's not what I wanted for my life at all. Because my mother had taught me better things and had more love in me that I was able to get through that because of the love of my mom. So if it weren't for the love of my mom, you know, I would have became a hardcore just like him, follow his path and probably end up the same way. And like I said, it wasn't his fault, but this is an example for you to follow. Um, Colossians 3.21 says, Father, do not provoke your children unless they become discouraged. You know, I didn't need provoked. I was already beat down. I came from a situation in New York where I was beat down. I, I needed love. I didn't need to be... And I, I've heard that story, tough love, you know, you need tough love. Well, that's different. Tough love can come when it's being led by God. There's a difference. Not where you think you got to go do some curls and then get on your boy or push him around or be the tough guy or girl or whatever. You know, that's not at all what God wants for the children. And Philippians 2, 4, back that up. Let each of you uh, look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. Means that <clears throat> because it was done to you doesn't mean you need to do it to others. Because you didn't have a good life doesn't mean your children don't need to have a good life. And a, a lot of people say, well, you know, I never had these things. And I have, I've gone through, and I, and I realize that. And God bless you that you went through those hard spells. But... It's not your child's fault. No matter who the person was, the man was, the woman was, it's not your child's fault. I'm calling somebody out on that today. Ephesians 6, 1, 4 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father, your mother, for this is the first commandment with a promise. That it may go well with you and that you may live along in the land. And your fathers, don't provoke your children to anger. 
but bring them up in a discipline and instruction of the Lord. It didn't say in discipline of what you think. It said discipline and instruction of the Lord. And that means we have to be the children of God to learn how to have these instructions before we can give them. How can you instruct somebody when you don't know how to do it? You think you know how to do it, but is it under Yeshua's and the Holy Spirit's guidance? No. Now, not all of you are doing that. I'm not saying that, but um, we're reaching out to those that really need to hear this today and really need to amplify those areas in their life for God's glory. You know, one of the things that love brings out was it brings out a connection, and a lot of times when you don't love that child or give that child that connection they need, that's when they go to try to find another connection. Whether it be gangs, whether it be bad you know, people that are hanging around and wanting to fit in the parties. And this is why, because you didn't make that connection with the child. Now, you know, people say, well, look, he's too old and he's not, you know, he's, the kids in school, well, look, you should have made that when he was a baby that he would have built that trust and want and desire in you as a parent to become exactly what you offered them. In John 14, 1, 31, it says, Let not your hearts be troubled, but believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. And if it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself, that where I may, you may also. And you know the way where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? And I think that's what your children, a lot of them trying to tell you. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. You've been down this road. I have no clue on. I don't have a clue or idea of you know, what you're trying to bring to me, but yet, and then you're throwing all this biblical principles in there, but you're not loving me through God first. This is not helping me one bit. It's throwing me away from religion. Because that's what it is, is religion. Whenever you don't have love and the Holy Spirit and Yeshua in it, it becomes a religion and theology, and the child will pick up on that as they pick up on what's in the world. Nothing. We'll take ownership that way. Um, there's people that have, you know, I heard back in the day, you know, they had a harsh whooping and they turned out a good kid. But let's look at that on a twofold. Turned out a good kid, but did they learn spiritually how to build? Or did they learn physically what not to do? That doesn't mean that they're not hurting inside. That doesn't mean they're not missing out on love because they are. And think about that. Just think about that a minute. You know how that will work. Now think about if you're a father or a person and you're fishing with your son or your daughter and they ask you for a fish. You know, I'd like to catch a fish, Dad. You know, I really would. And... Let's see what Luke eleven eleven says on that. What father among you, if a son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? And see, that's what's going on. You know, that's why God took his only begotten son. Uh, and whoever should believe in him wouldn't perish, but have everlasting life, because he didn't send his son into the world to condemn it, but in the world that it might be saved to him. Now, these kids got a lot of pressure on them today. Not only do they got the media, not only do they got people telling them they're overweight or underweight or don't look good enough, but then they got no love generating in the family. What the mess is going to go on is trouble. You open the door to trouble for your child. And you give them that avenue. Well, I put them in sports and I put her in ballet. and I, Well, that that's my, not, might not be the answer. Their answer might be they just want time with you, a one-on-one, -on -one, to know you love them and for you to show them how to catch that fish. I went fishing with my dad one time, and I'll never forget this, and this is a testimony, you know, again. And we went fishing, and I was excited. I'm like, man, I'm finally getting to go fishing with my dad. I was all excited about it. 
And, you know, it was one of those things where you never, ever going to forget this experience. So we get in the boat. He takes us to a certain area. He knows where the fish are. And he's laughing. And I'm looking over at him. I'm like, why is he laughing? And, uh, well, he's pulling up the fish. And I'm like, I'm fishing. What? You know, how come? Well, he didn't tell me he was bottom fishing. He was fishing at the floor of the 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 water where the bottom was it was about 23 foot down because the fish it was cold water where they were bedding in right there and uh he just laughing and mocking and making fun the whole time and it really hurt my feelings it really did because i felt like wow i mean here i am with my dad thinking i'm gonna have a awesome time and get all excited and jump up and down to catch a fish and show him I'm about something finally. Maybe I would win over, you know, him in some respect. And the whole trip was nothing. I, nothing. Nothing. And this is how the kids feel sometimes. They feel empty inside. They don't feel loved. They feel like you're throwing things in their life to make a fix for what you didn't have. There might be a child in you that you haven't fixed. So I'm calling you out on parenting today, and I'm saying do it in love. Do it in agape love. Get all the wisdom and knowledge from Yeshua and do it the right way. Give them a chance. Give them a chance that they'll feel that love and know every day is a meaning to them. Every day that they're with you is that blessing because we don't know how much longer we're on this earth. We don't know. We don't know how much time we have, but wouldn't it be awesome to just enjoy that time loving your children, building them, and holding them spiritually in strength because they loved you and you loved them back in a spiritual way? You got kids today picking guns up thinking they're going to get the answer out of anger and they're shooting people and they're in prisons. You got, they had a, there was a scenario where the kids are actually looking at sexual content and at the end, uh, in kindergarten and first grade, they had issues with doing things to other kids. I mean, come on. We used to ride bicycles and put baseball cards in the the spokes. And, you know, we played wiffle ball and, you know, uh, dodgeball. And we grew up in being a kid. That's what a kid needs to have fun and, 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 and learn to parent under the righteousness. Because you had a dead bad day at work. Or because somebody got something against you or your boyfriend or your husband or whatever. It's not the child's fault. And you got to receive that today, that they need that blessing bestowed upon them. That they'll have a chance, because I'm telling you straight up, tear for tear, many tears, many cries, many, whatever you want to call it, I would not have been here if it weren't for my mother. My mother stayed in that prayer closet, and she never gave up on me. And she knew she couldn't give me the things I needed. She tried. She married a man that she tried to give us what we needed. She tried to hold that ground because we were poor. We didn't have nothing. We lived on top of a store. We barely got to eat. You know, we had soup every day. And on the weekend, we had a mom would make a special treat. You know, we get some chocolate pudding and uh, that was it. So, saints, I, I just pray today that you get a hold of this and really grip to this word I'm speaking to you today. And if you need help and you want healing, I want you to pray this prayer of me. I no longer am living in the past. I put my hands to the plow and I'm learning love by Yeshua's command and the Holy Spirit teaching me. Through wisdom and knowledge, I will stand in Yeshua's glory, in his strength. I will not be that person ever again because I'm stepping into a new parenting, a new family of God today. And I give glory and praise for the release of these lies in my old past and the new beginning for me right here right now amen amen if you pray that prayer i know yes was going to do a mighty work in your life god bless you this big d cross the next time one two three